Hey there, this video is about uh, how I calibrated a thermometer. Started out with a stir bar and a little flask and this thermometer that I got at my um, local home beverage uh, brewing store. This happens to be my local home brewing store um, called Alternative Beverage, also known as eBrew. And uh, that thermometer was seven bucks and something. And uh, it's it turned out to be real accurate if, if you use it right. Now, that's one of the things I learned. I, you have to dip it just the right dip amount of um, distance in the water. Now, I got five of these um, electronic thermostat or electronic uh, thermometers, digital thermometers from eBay for 20 bucks. So they're about four bucks a piece delivered to my house. And, and uh, so I got, I got a bunch of them and three of them are pretty accurate with each other. So uh, what I decided to do is take one of the three that were accurate to each other and, uh, and, and go ahead and um, uh, make a chart for myself for when I'm mashing so that, when, um, my, so, so that I can tell exactly what mash temperature I'm at. So I took the water and added it to this little flax, flask and microwaved it to get it up to, um, to boiling. Actually, I, uh, I sort of overboiled it and had to sort of do it again because it, it boiled too much and I couldn't sink the thermometer far, far enough. But um, anyway, got it boiling and uh, took it down and, uh, and stuck the thermometer into it. And I had taped, or not taped, but I had rubber banded the, um, the uh, uh, digital thermometer to the bottom of the, this thermometer so they were both getting the same reading. So I stuck it in there and they were sitting at 88 point three C there um, and now what I did is I started the stir bar up just to make sure that the, both the thermometers had the same temperature and I dumped it into that line which is actually more important than I thought so you know when I first car started out there it looks like I was like at 91 degree uh, Celsius and um, so I'm gonna just start writing down all these temperatures as this cools down and so and that 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 thermometer is reading 86.4. <clears throat> so I'm uh, just running the stir bar just so the water's flowing around there. Probably would not necessarily have to do that. You could just stir it with your hand. Um, and uh, I'm just constantly writing these down, not writing them down actually, typing them into Excel. And so here's some numbers that I've collected so far. And time passes as this thing cools down and I just continue to write down all these values. Like every time I see that the um, thermometer reads a, an even reading. Um, I, I go ahead and write it down. It looks like we're, you know, looking at, uh, well, I couldn't tell the temperature there, but, but uh, yeah, the stir bars is bouncing around there, having a good time. And, uh, you know, of course, I have a homebrew there, so, you know, not, not to worry. So, I, anyway, I get down to about 55 and figure, well, that's um, 55C. So, uh, I'm probably about done with uh, mash temperature. That's the range I care about. I'm not really all that concerned about any others. So I'll go ahead and turn off the uh, the uh, stir plate, and I start doing some analysis in uh, in Excel. I want to see how um, how my uh, my uh, digital thermometer actually uh, worked out, and how the uh, differences if the differences look like they have a pattern to them. So I take my data, and it looks like um, starting out about four degrees Celsius difference. And then um, as, as time goes by and the temperature drops, it drops down to, you know, more like the one degree Celsius. So it's, um, it's looking like it's changing over time, but if it's linear, I'm okay with that. If the, if the, if the, uh, if the error is linear over time. So I plot it on a, on a line graph here and yeah, it's, it's pretty close. I mean, it's, I, I could draw a straight line through that pretty, pretty easily. So I figure that's, um, that's, uh, Good enough for me and I'll uh, in fact I will draw a straight line through it just for fun there so um, that that looks like um, I'll just use that function to uh, estimate the um, the the uh, actual temperature versus what that digital thermometer is reading so I'm um, plot myself a little um, a little uh, first first of all I need to name these X and Y um, so that I can easily type the formula in because Excel provides you, this is an old version of Excel, but I like the old version of Excel better than the new one because I know how to work it. Um, but anyway, name these two regions X and Y, and then I can type in the slope and the intercept, and I can make myself a little formula that will, uh, that will give me, you know, if I, if I give it the input of the, um, the uh, digital thermometer, it'll give me the output of the actual temperature. 
Um, so you type in the slope y comma x here, and uh, that's that. And then you type in the intercept um, y comma x, and uh, it'll go ahead and tell you uh, those two values. And then you can use those values in um, in your uh, in your uh, formula that you're going to use for uh, go ahead and uh, generating the uh, the line. So let's just see how this works out. Make sure it looks good. This is testing against the original data, actually. So it should it should. I'm going to check the error here in a minute. Um, the error should be pretty small. You know, just you know, probably like on the order of a half a degree uh, centigrade at the worst. Um, you know, when you're reading the digital or the the analog thermometer, sometimes depending upon if your head's above it or below it, you get a little bit of a different reading. But I think the thermometer itself is pretty darn accurate because I got it to boiling, um, and it was it was uh, if you if you immerse it just the right distance, the uh, the the uh, lab thermometer is really good. So yeah, I mean it looks like most of them are point two or, or less. There's a couple of point fives in there, but for the most part. Um, uh, it's pretty good. So let me make a little graph here um, in the range that I care about. Um, so I figure about 85 degrees Celsius on down uh, to about maybe, f I don't know what I put it at, 50 something. Uh, we'll see in a minute. But uh, I use the, uh, um, so I got the, I got the, the uh, formula in there. And then this next formula, which you can't really see, I'm converting from uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, which is the uh, the nine fifths thing, and the thirty two degrees. So um, so we're seeing this this uh, uh, sort of prediction thing that that uh, we've derived, and uh, starting at one fifty degrees and on going down to you know one thirties uh, in the mash area mash uh, range. Um, actually, starting up a little bit higher than one fifty. 157 down to I think 138 or something like that. Um, so here, let's make another graph um, just so that we can have something to paste on the wall when we're out in the garage. So uh, so if that thing says 66, that means it's 157.88, whatever. So um, we got uh, you know a nice uh, nice. We're going to make a nice little uh, uh, paper chart. So uh, we're going to gra grab an X, another X, Y uh, chart here. And then the defaults are not too good. So we're going to grab some nice uh, uh, extra lines, extra grid lines, so that we can follow it with our finger when we're out in the garage trying to mash. And um, adjust the, uh, the minimum so that it gives us a nice slope and we can see the difference. I'm going to add in a trend line here in a second. And that will, uh, you know, that'll make it so that we don't have to make any uh, eyeballing it when we're out there. Make it nice and easy for ourselves. So we've got plenty of grid lines, and we got plenty of numbers on the uh, axes, and we'll we'll add ourselves a trend line here, and uh, give us a straight trend line, and um, maybe add a little title to the top of it so we'll know which thermometer it is. I have, like I said, I have three of those digital ones that came up pretty close. The other two are not as close. I'll probably just not use those. So yeah, I mean, if you buy those off, I didn't mention it, those those uh, digital thermometers came from eBay. I don't remember what the seller's name was or anything, but uh, I got them for four bucks a piece delivered, so it can't be a, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Um, so then I printed out this this paper chart and so, for example, you know, let's say you want to mash at 150, you just come up, you go across, and you say, okay, I need, you know, 61 and a half or whatever that was. And then um, that's about it. So uh, remember to dip your uh, lab thermometer in to the right distance, and you'll be in good shape. Hope you enjoyed it.